so this is an experiment that uh, trying to do. Uh, in the past, I've uh, tried to record my voice and, and share it with Saurabh, um, Saurabh Jain, and he was uh, extremely uh, helpful in putting things together in form of a video note. Um, um, so a lot of times I, it, it, it happens that uh, spontaneously some thoughts come and um, sometimes I'm able to put them up, put them down in, in, in form of, you know, like, uh, uh, this book, this paper, uh, which might not be visible. Uh, maybe it will be visible when I move my hand. Um, and uh, this is another medium that I'm trying to experiment with. So just bear with me. Uh, what I'm going to do with this video, I don't know. Maybe I'll put it out or it will be there for private viewing or whatever happens with it. Um, so I was thinking about uh, one of the client mandates that we're trying to devise right now, media technology company. And we're trying to figure out how do we land the context uh, to the leaders and to the rest of the organization. <clears throat> it occurred to me that <clears throat> currently we need to we need to acknowledge the following uh, in all earnestness. Uh, is we need to give we need to come up with some kind of an agreement or shared reality of the context that we're dealing with. Uh, one of the aspects of the context is external, which is more to do with the external world, external to the human being, external to the employees at the organization, and external to the organization itself, actually. So one of the contexts is what is external to the, to the organization, to this company? What's the evolving context, a general evolving context? Um, may be applicable to any uh, organization, any industry. And then I think there are certain uh, uh, aspects of human nature, which again is to be taken into consciousness when we are trying to create a, 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 a shared context, a shared reality perspective to begin with. From the from the external to the organization context, the systems that we occupy, the political system, the economic system, the social system, uh, has a certain texture to it now, evolving as it is. The pace of change is, is different. Texturally, it's faster. Uh, because the systems, the economic system, the valuation systems, the competition systems uh, are maximizing a few variables of how the organization will get its set of resources from the market, whether it's the client opportunity or funding or recognitions from uh, peers or uh, ability to attract talent or getting the right kind of policies or their interpretations from the government or judiciary all of that is 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 veering in a certain direction where they're trying to maximize a few variables, <clears throat> uh, financial metrics being extremely important. And valuation have become center stage uh, or had become center stage for a long, long period of time. As, as my friend Somin Sarkar keeps saying that the era of easy money might be over. So they 
so a lot of emphasis uh, of a lot of companies, especially in the startup space, was around um, valuation, getting a certain use case, uh, having exponential use case, scalability, um, value perception by the users, uh, users themselves paying or somebody else paying because the users are using the system, or the future uh, scenario of both uh, that could give rise to the funding possibilities or value unlocking possibilities. So that is changing. So the first was pace of change. The second is the form of competition. The nature of competition currently is 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 different. It's it's more indexed to a few variables and um, and. Uh, very difficult to establish the kind of value creation in most of the cases. Um, copyability has increased, is faster. You launch something, somebody else may be able to do it faster. Uh, now that is in contrast to what Peter Thiel keeps talking about, uh, the ability to create or focusing on creating monopolies because what you're trying to do is then essentially actually making it less copyable by another uh, competitor uh, because of multiple reasons. One is the offering itself, the technology stack behind it, or the sheer sheer scale that you've amassed over a period of time, which is not very easily replicable because there's a certain kind of stickiness if, if people are on one platform and the network is on one platform and the transactions are on one platform. Um, it's difficult for the networks to migrate to another platform. Um, the business models in most, what this is then doing is different companies are launching their business, different companies have their, have their products or services that they offer to the customer, the customer uh, having some kind of uh, um, uh, functional value, emotional value, social value in the words of um, great Clayton Christensen, Harvard Professor Clayton Christensen, and then that could uh, lead to um, uh, a kind of a relationship between the customer and the company. Now, I should invoke what Matthew Tice uh, mentioned in my last interaction with him, where he says that there is a big inversion coming, or it's already happening. The big inversion is the relationship the power equation between the customer and the company, the employee and the company. Uh, the era of loyalty of, of, of customer to the brand, employee to the organization is shifting. Uh, customers are more <coughs> experimental, more demanding. Uh, this could be either in, in the feature sets that they're looking for or the experience or or even the ESG responsibility frameworks, uh, whether the organizations are having or not. <clears throat> uh, exponential tech is, is, is so sorry. So coming back to business models are shaky is, you cannot really say that you're working, there's a product, there's a pain point, there's a cluster of pain, there's a cluster of gap in the market and uh, you bring in a product and the product is going to be uh, able to gain traction enough for early adoption and scaling effects. And that itself could uh, be a new market. So, so you could see it from the perspective of, uh, let's use a two by two, um, or old demand and new demand. Uh, uh, old demand would mean that old, uh, gaps or pains that, that, that were being solved. Uh, new gaps, new pains uh, are being solved. So old demand, new demand. Now between the old and the new, it could, it could be a variation or a completely new uh, kind of a demand. And on the y-axis, the old means of production and new means of production. So you get four quadrants, or old demand, old means of production, old demand, new means of production, uh, new demand, new means of production, new demand, old means of production. 
you know, means of production here means uh, the entire supply chain of uh, actually delivering the, 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 the delivering to the customer, you know, right from sourcing, resourcing, raw materialing. Uh, and, and I'm using some of the vocabularies of, uh, of industry sets, so I'm mindful of that. This is applicable even in the, you know, how you get into your data, raw data, and then how you're analyzing, is it moving from the chain of data, the nested of data and information, understanding, uh, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. <clears throat> so, uh, so business models are, are, are straddling in, 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 the, in that sense. Um, I mean, if we, if we just take a step back and then take a 70 year, 75 year view of, of, of economy, uh, uh, whatever information technology has been able to accomplish, part of the information technology has been in the space of uh, efficiency and automation uh, in the entire delivery supply chain of, of old demand. But part of the information technology has been in the space where uh, uh, aspects like social network, while there was a need for it, but in the global paradigm, you needed uh, people to be able to communicate. For a global, for a global uh, globalization, which is, they said, for a globalization as, as one of the parts of feedback loop, the global uh, information exchange, connection exchange, um, movement of people and goods, all of that. And the more this, this, uh, is is experimental and tinkering and facilitating. It would feed in here. It would feed in here, up to a point, of course. I mean, if it puts, if it if it moves in a way where the substrate, the underlying substrate of existing old demand and old uh, context of people, of nations, of their uh, equity, uh, equality, fairness in those countries are disturbed in a in a rapid manner. And that substrate will assert itself on the global liberal order that the thought is the model for the future of the world. Uh, but taking a step back, you do have so pace of change is 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 different. Uh, nature of competition is is very different. Uh, business models are shaky. Uh, we're still using a lot of old industrial. Even in this conversation, when I'm trying to explain, I am having to. Or maybe I, I'm not skilled enough, but I'm I'm invoking a lot of industrial paradigm, military paradigms, um, in in the way I'm trying to land my ideas. Um, uh, easy money era is over. I appreciate that. Exponential tech is 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 currently on a on an extremely extremely fast runway, with a lot of tailwind. A lot of companies trying to do a lot of things in the. Uh, 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 I just. I, uh, so the exponential tech uh, disruptions happening and uh, it's creating a completely different uh, context and landscape and platform uh, uh, that will really challenge the old means of production. Uh, old demand, new demand, old means of production, new means of production in a very different way. Uh, industry consolidation cycles are going to be shorter, faster. Um, looks like looks like that is the case. Um, of course, that when you make any of such statement, it, it's not a lose uh, a single vector statement. You have different forces which act as headwind and tailwinds. Uh, right from competition commissions or monopoly restrictive practices uh, to different interest groups and cause groups trying to assert themselves and seeing whether that is the right uh, thing to happen in a society, in a country, or in a continent. <laughs> we also have an uh, from a very specific use case, that actual customer perspective, I think the use cases might get a little. Uh, 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 so when you have when you have a use case for a for for a person who's trying to do work, and a use case where a person is trying to consume something, 
in both the cases, uh, the complexity might be increasing. Uh, one use case, uh, complementary to another, incompatible with another, in sequence to another, loose sequence, tight sequence, uh, loose synchronization, high synchronization. So you'll see a very different kind of uh, a tug of a tug of uh, forces uh, of 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 the sequencing and synchronizing high low high low <coughs> high low. <coughs> um, even if it is not complex, I mean, it's, if there are simple things that the work uh, desk demands in the screen in this moment or the customer demands in this particular experience i think the sheer number of parts that need to come together to be able to uh, deliver that is 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 increasing um it's not just the sheer number of parts that are increasing i mean the, the nature of parts uh, could have elements of the number the geographies the modalities of being in the physical world or the virtual world contributing to it, different actors, uh, different actors inside and outside the organization that are asserting for that or facilitating for that. Uh, which brings us to a, a segment of global and machine global. No longer the competition is just local. The next door person. It's not a small geography uh, economy. It's a it's a global landscape economy. So you do have competitions from 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 global. Uh, you have global competition as well as machine as a competition now. So so the question is so putting all of this together pace of change bad form of competition old industrial tools techniques business model shaky feature factory era over easy money era over exponential tech industrial consolidation cycle shrinking complexity of use case delivery and softwares that that uh, and information technology that is required to deliver that on a consistently changing basis because even that is not static uh, global and machine competition now, these are just a bunch of intuitive, uh, very initial intuitions. And the, the question that an organization needs to ask is, uh, of course, they can always have debates around them and add more or delete some, depending on their uh, context. The question is, how is the organization keeping this in awareness? And if this is the case, how is it... How is their own organization uh, remaining same or shifting to be able to take care of these, right? Um, so that's one question. Uh, so you have a triad of sorts. You have uh, the external context. You have the organization uh, substrate in terms of its explicit and implicit aspect to explicit would be the rules, norms, incentives, strategies, objectives, KPIs, and all of that. Uh, and the implicit would be more informed, the cultural shifts, uh, culture of the organization. Uh, how is this uh, context within the organization being created? So the organizational context, the external context, and the third is the human nature context. Uh, a lot has been said about human nature, a lot has been uh, debated about human nature and uh, what we essentially find in, a, in, 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 in most organizations, especially that have been around for quite some time, is you'll, you'll find that there are certain things that are peculiar to such organization and or the human nature. And if you put that in a human nature context and you keep that in awareness, uh, it could be useful at some point. So let's just go over some of them. Again, these are very initial intuitions. Debatable, they're not all uh, universals. So you eventually have a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of, but a very few self-motivated individuals. Uh, in in if, you, if you walk into an organization, a system, a social system, you find that there are a very few uh, self-motivated people who are initiators who are constantly in the either sustaining some incremental initiations or 
constructive initiations. Uh, so that's one. Question is, why is it that there are only few? Now, somebody will come along and say it's it's tending to be hierarchy, the past power equations, unfairnesses, the baggage of unfairnesses, the uh, fate of the earlier change or ideas or business models. Um, and nobody would deny that. But the, but the thing is, we, we look at the thing where we say there are very few self-motivated, self-initiated people. Uh, I think we've not realized that you've entered into an era with large-scale exchanges of, of intangible, of uh, atomization, of um, intersubjectivity. And we're dealing with that. Even right now, as you're listening to me, it's all intangible. I'm talking about concepts. I'm not there. Uh, these are subjective domains. You may agree, you may disagree. And there are so many things that I've been discussing I mean, in the last 15, 20 minutes that you've been on this. There's so many concepts, there's so many parts, right? So those are atomizations that you're calling as atomizations. And they need to be coming together and uh, they, they need not be coming together. They, we don't know how each of these are interrelated. You know, how is bad form of competition giving rise to few people uh, who are self-initiated? How is uh, pace of change affecting our ability to deal with intangibles and intersubjectivities? Uh, so, so the first one was self, few self-initiated, self-motivated people. Uh, uh, the second is the inability to, or need for a higher ability for dealing with intangibility, intersubjectivity, customization. <laughs> and then we have the element of, uh, uh, because this is the case, we also need to upgrade, unlearn, relearn uh, aspects like conversational intelligence. Are we having more transactional conversation, positional conversation, or transformational conversation? Transaction is largely propositional, procedural uh, conversations, uh, answering questions of what and how. Propos uh, positional conversations are, are are more like I'm right and you're wrong. My tribe, us, are better or right or more good, more intelligent, more victimized, more <clears throat> deprived. So it's more of a positional conversation. Transformation is where we enter into the conversation to discover together, sense together. And a commitment to co-development, a commitment of co-experiences um, sort. And that requires a very different kind of uh, who speaks when, how, choice of words, looking at words in a, um, The thing is that uh, you have these conversational intelligence, emotional intelligence, social intelligence, conflict intelligence, political intelligence. Uh, that is is needed in people to be able to tread some of these challenges of human nature and the context. So that's that seems to be uh, you know a huge demand. That's. Uh, on on the revisions of human nature uh, or the creation of, of that as a potential skill. Uh, what's also seen and talked about a lot is it's difficult for people to achieve accountability of what one is delivering and uh, who's contributing to what and how is it really creating value and how is the value being really shared. Um, that's that's becoming more and more vexing as an issue. Uh, we also see situations where people are hiding behind the screens or hiding behind certain measurements, KPIs of tick mark and, and saying, we're already achieving this. You told us that this is what is needed and we're achieving this. Um, I think over a period of time, if a person is not uh, going deeper, if the individual is not going deeper and on a continuous learning and self-discovery journey, 
it would it has a tendency to give rise to perhaps uh, a lot of self deception. Um, people may even end up lying about their work and the effort. Uh, so if you just take a step back, on one side you have the external context, which is uh, becoming really difficult. On the other side, you have the the, the way the some parts some parts of the human nature force a significant number of people are playing out. Uh, but then you can also argue that this is not letting people create the right kind of uh, <clears throat> upgradation for this. In absence of which, uh, this continues to weigh in on this and uh, this is becoming even more vexing, even more uh, the, the rivalrous dynamics between <clears throat> between individuals and groups within and outside the organization might might take forms of maladaptive forms of competitions. And that's a big, big worry for that should be a big worry for a lot of leaders. <clears throat> uh, because it is not just the case that if their organization wins, then they can, you know, bask in glory. Actually, if 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 the whole of humanity or a significant number of them, or a significantly more number than the numbers that they're managing, uh, are moving in that direction. Some point it will come back and and bite them in a different manner. Could could possibly do that. So there's the external context, there's the human nature context, and what is the organization context? How is the organization coming to grips with these contexts? How is the organization? What is it that the organization is doing to take cognizance of this and making shifts in their structures and skills, the explicit and the implicit, to create conditions for the ability to create value for all stakeholders and balancing them in a dynamic way. And if that is not brought about, this could become really problematic. Uh, so this is, again, as I said at the beginning, uh, it's an experiment. I'm just trying to put this together. I don't know how I'm going to be using it. Uh, maybe some people might see and see it as very casual, very loose, very unstructured, uh, very unprofessional. Uh, but the intention here is to just lay out the, uh, lay out the essence of what we're dealing with. Uh, thank you.